Well, thank you guys for uh, this evening and allowing me the privilege to be part of your service today. I consider it an honor and a privilege to be part of your services, and you are an extended part of our church. And so we're thankful tonight that we could come together and just pray and seek the Lord in a sermon that the Lord has given me and uh, seek what the Lord would have us to be done done today. I have a wonderful sermon for you today, I believe will touch your hearts. I have some songs attached that I believe will touch your heart. There's one called a uh, prisoner song and I specifically wrote it for people who are incarcerated who uh, have never seen their children but have a longing to see them and um, may never have seen them for various reasons. Um, and you can fill in the blanks on those, but the song gets a little emotional, so just to let you know. So today I'm going to share that with you and some other songs for you that I wrote, and then a wonderful message. So God bless you. Looking forward to what God's going to do. Amen. Although I'd never met you, I love you. When I see your pictures, I wish I was with you. To tell you about the man you never met, when the years go fading away. And my health will be no more The chance to see you smile And hear you laugh the hours away My eyes will see silhouettes I want you to remember this, my dear That this song just for you Some hollow my dreams to dry up All my tears I left in a bottle All my dreams are now shipwrecked Locked hard in the cellar door A fairy tale that never came Like all who walk this earth I can't erase the past hurts Or say that I'm sorry forever Somewhere along the way I just got to move on If I'll ever meet you Will our paths ever cross Only by the goodness of God Could such a thing ever be Like a nomad in the night A weary distant traveler Folks who made a difference The doers and not the slumbers Across the span of time Go winds blow from the north Remember This song is just for you Yeah. 
was marked for perfect, you know, just like all who won't be served, I can't erase the past hurts, or say that I'm sorry forever, somewhere along the way, I just got to move on.
sermon. It's called the Narrow and Wide Gates. Now you probably have heard this preached many times if you've been in church, but I have a lot of different angles I'd like to take on this today, I'm giving it much thought. It says in Matthew 7, 13, 14, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now, in the matchless name of Jesus, we just come before you and just praise you and thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for every man who's come to be able to hear your word. We pray you bless them, bless their families. Pray, Heavenly Father, that this word would go out with your anointing and your favor upon it. And, Lord, that you would touch hearts in a way that only you can. And, uh, Lord, just thank you, Lord, for the reopening of the prison system so I could come back in. And, Lord, just look forward to what you're going to do. Now, tonight, Holy Spirit of God, I pray you sweep to the pews of this chapel, this church. And, Lord God, that you would move mightily in every man. Move mightily in their families and bless everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. I wanted to look at this sermon because I realized that, first of all, there is a narrow and a wide road just being born. That we're born into the wide road. When we're born, we're all born into sin. The wages of sin is death. We're all born on that wide road. And some try to make the most of what they can on that wide road, and they enter into all sorts of businesses, all sorts of decisions uh, on what they want to do with their lives. Uh, some go to school, some drop out, some decide to sell drugs, some decide not to, and some just try to live a rebellious life, and some don't. And so we're faced all our life with decisions. Uh, we're faced with decisions on uh, what life we should lead and what life we shouldn't lead. There's a poem by Robert Frost I just want to read to you that just speaks a lot about just the life in general. And it's called The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. But being one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as fear I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, just as fair, and having perhaps a better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though, it, though as for that passing there, had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step they trod black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. And knowing how my leads on my way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I should be telling this with a sigh. Some, somewhere the ages to ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. That poem is so accurately taste stating the obvious and that there are two roads in life that you could take. The both the wide road and the narrow road even at a young age look the same and they look like you could take them both and they would get you the same place but you look as you go on the wide road that there's all these glimmering lights, there's all this prosperity, there's all this wonderful things that catch the eye and the imagination and they catch all of the uh, things that your emotions and your flesh would love to chew on and the wide world looks so appealing that you want to be on it so bad and and that's where every, that's where a lot of people are at they're on that wide road and you're going man I want to be on that wide road with all these other people and, and you seek out even at a young age to what can I do to make a lot of money, to seek fame and fortune, to be on that wide road? What can I do that I may be on that wide road with everybody else? And then our verse says today that there are few that are on that narrow road. 
Well, that narrow road happens to be the narrow road where you accomplish things, where you become somebody. It's through hard work. It's through being in school. And it's through studying to become whatever it is you want to become. And those people find, them way, find the way to success. There's no actor. There's no actress. There's no musician. In fact, I know that as a musician now. There's no way, no basketball player, no football player, that can make it to the top of their game, to make it to the top of their field and be on that wide road. You, you look at Michael Jordan, one of my favorite, I'm sorry, I'm biased, but you look at Michael Jordan and all the hours he's put in to pray, to practice, to practice, to practice, to become who he was. You look at all the people that have made it the top musicians. They stuck into a room, they played guitar, they played keyboards, they played drums or whatever it was, and they did all that while their friends were playing outside. And those that became successful in college, they made in college, decided, yeah, there was party time, obviously. But there were times where they stuck themselves in a room and said, no, I want to become the best or whatever it is in my field that is out there. And to do that, I'm not going to accomplish it being out there having fun with all my friends, but I need to hunker in and to study to get to where I am in practice. And you see the people rise to the top of their game and whatever it is that they do in life. And you will quickly find that they will tell you, quite honestly and brutally, they spent hours, literally hours, even people with natural talent, uh, even like the, the people from the Bucks, and obviously I love the Bucks, they're my team, and the Packers because they're my team. But you look at all of these players, they didn't get to the top of the game because they just had a natural gift that God gave them. Yes, God gave a gift, but they had to develop it. They had to become something with it. And that took a lot of work. And so in life, that is true. That you become this person who enters into the narrow gate and becomes the person, but very few find it. Most people are on the wide gate. Thinking, I got a talent to do this, I got a talent to do that. I'll just stick on the wide gate and I'll become somebody. But most of the time, that's not sustaining. That doesn't last forever. It just, it eventually just goes away. And you become just an average Joe, just an average person doing an average thing. And all your dreams, all your hopes, all your visions, that you had aspirations for the flesh that kept on chewing you alive, and kept on telling you to stay on that road, a wide road you end up crashing because there is no end to that end game other than destruction like our word says today. That path to destruction is that wide road but the one that leads to life the Bible says is that narrow road and very few find it. Very few will discipline themselves to say I'm going to study God's word. I want to be the best Christian man there is out there. I want to know the word of God. And that doesn't mean you sacrifice freedom. It doesn't mean you sacrifice having time to be with friends and neighbors and, and, and you know other things in life. You just can't sustain yourself on the narrow road without having some type of relationship, communication, or breakup in, in your hours to be able to spend with other people. It doesn't mean that. But what it means is you have a strong determination that I want to become somebody. In order to become somebody, it's going to take some practice, it's going to take time, and I'm never going to find that on that wide road. And, and brother, the, the sooner you and I discover that, I discovered it at 33, and had to work through issues still to this very day, because my flesh wants to tug me onto that wide road where all these other things are, and my spirit man, my, the Holy Spirit that lives within me says, no, brother man, you got to stay on the narrow road and seek what God has for you. And so i got to battle that. And sometimes that battle, brothers, is every hour. Sometimes it's a couple hours. And sometimes it's just every day. But to make a determination every morning when you get up and say, Brother, Mike, I am going to be on that narrow road. I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to enjoy my life. But I want to become something. I want to become all that God has for me. 
Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, he said that the thief comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. And uh, it's an awesome verse, and I really enjoy it. And in that, uh, I like it so much because it speaks of the fact that the devil comes in and tries to keep you on the wide road. Remember, when you're born, you're already on the wide road. But he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And all those things are on that wide road. The wide road just takes you to destruction like it said in our verse in Matthew at 7, 13, and 14. It takes you there for destruction. But Jesus said on that narrow road is where I've come, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Some say, some translations say to the fullest. Now, if you think about this very fact that Jesus said, I've come that they may have life. Jesus puts you on the narrow road when you're saved, spiritually now. We're, talk, we're, we're uh, moving into the spiritual realm. Jesus said that when you get onto that narrow road, you're on that narrow road when you're saved. And that is so awesome because it is a miracle of God. Some people say that it's no longer miracles because after the writing of the New Testament, miracles in it. I beg to differ with you. If you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if He has transformed your life into a new creature and the old has been passed away, blood, brother, that's a miracle of God and nothing short. And so the Bible says that He's come to give you life, to have your sin debt forgiven, to have you, you've been blood washed by the, by the blood of Christ. It, it's incredible. It's an awesome verse. Uh, and it's an incredible experience to go through that. And that starts you on the narrow road. But there are many people on that narrow road who choose the wide road of Christianity because they seek nothing other than Jesus, other than fire insurance, other than not to burn in a lake of fire when they pass, just to know that they're saved and they're going to heaven. That's all they want. That's all they ask for is to know Jesus. So you can be saved, you're saved for sure, and you're now you're on the wide road of Christianity, you're still coming to the point where you know Jesus, and you're still going to be saved. But that's just life. That's just the saving life. And yeah, that's incredible, that's an awesome experience. But Jesus said, I came, came that they may have it more abundantly. And that's the narrow road of Christianity. So the wide road and the narrow road of Christianity still gets you, still gets you salvation, still gets you to heaven, still gets you all those wonderful, cool attributes that Christ said come with being a child of God. But brother, it's on that narrow road of Christianity where God can work in you, where you come to the point with Jesus, where you say. You know, maybe this thought I have about Christianity or of culture of man, maybe I'm wrong in my theology. Maybe I'm wrong in my thinking. And the Holy Spirit will challenge you on every front that's inside of you. And you have to be willing, and I have to be willing to admit that maybe what I'm believing is not right. And I have to be open to the notion that maybe what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach me is from the Lord. It's not from the enemy. And what I need to do is embrace what the Lord is teaching me. Because the Bible says in Proverbs in 16 that he who heeds instructions will prosper. And blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord. So you prosper with wisdom, discernment, with just revelation, with just everything when you travel the, the narrow road of Christianity. When, when you travel with Christ and you allow the Holy Spirit in what we call sanctification in order to get you closer and closer to who Christ is. And there's a false teaching out there, there's a heresy out there, and it's damning, that teaches you that once you're saved, you no longer sin, you're just, you're perfect, God has saved you and, and, and cleaned up your mess and now you're saved and, and you're perfect. Well, 
theologically, you're, you're righteous in the fact you've been justified that your sins are no longer going to be accounted against you. You are on your way to heaven. And the Lord does hold you in the palm of His hand. But brother, you still will struggle with your flesh. That old man that lives inside you does not want to give up its territory, nor give up his authority into who you are. Yes, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you, but you have to give that Holy Spirit access inside of you in order for you to become what God wants you to become. And Jesus gives us this wonderful promise in Ephesians chapter 2 and 10. It's for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has, which is of God. And so in Ephesians 2 and 10, Christ has put a seed in you to be able to become all that you need to become as a Christian. And that seed becomes flourishing and becomes a wonderful oak tree along the rivers of righteousness, along the rivers of life. When you allow the Holy Spirit access into your life, and in this big word we call again call sanctification, you allow God access to every part of your body. And that's not easy to do. That again has to be a day-to-day -day decision for some. I wake up today and I say, Lord, I want you to I want the fullness of what you have for me this day to be fulfilled in me. I don't want to live on the wide road of Christianity, just sitting on the couch, just knowing I'm going to go to heaven. But I want to become something for the, for the family of God, for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. I want to become all that you want me to become. And in that decision, the Lord is in that. That is music to the ears of the Lord. Because His plan is for you to follow that road. His plan is to see how close you can come to Him. And so I want to give you an example. Peter made a statement in John. And Christ said, who do you say that, who do, who do men say that I am? And of course Peter is going about and he's saying, well, you know, some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you're Elias. But he said, who do you think that I am? Well, Peter said, you're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. And so Christ said, that didn't come from you. That came from the Holy Spirit. And so it was only a short time after that that Jesus said he was going to the cross. And, and, and Peter said, I will never deny you. I will be with you, and you'll, even if all else, even if all, everybody else in the world walks away from you, I am going to follow you. Now I want you to think about that statement. I paraphrased it, obviously. But is that phrase true? Think about it for a minute. Is that phrase true? We know that Peter did deny Christ, and Christ said before the cock throws three times, you're going to deny me. So he did. Then, of course, Christ restored him. But then there was this day of Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came into Acts chapter 2, came into that room, and there were cloven tongues of fire. And there were people uh, that they were in that prayer room. And I, I can only imagine, again, I'm just paraphrasing, and I'm just kind of reading between the lines, that I suppose Peter looked at those cloven tongues of fire was the representation of the Holy Spirit and said, you know, that same Holy Spirit that gave me the right answers to the fact that Jesus was the Christ is now going to be the same Holy Spirit that's going to fill me and make what I was called to do come to fruition because Jesus said, you are the rock and upon my church I will build. And so it was so <clears throat> in answer to the question, that the answer yes was yes. Because Peter did, went all the way to the end of his life. He was not perfect. He made many mistakes. And, and that is something you're still going to do all your life. You're, you're not going to be perfect. You'll never be perfect. I'll never be perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. 
We still live in mortal bodies that sin. We still live in mortal bodies that have not put on immortality yet. So we got stuff we got to work out, but the Holy Spirit convicts us, works things out, convicts us of other things in our life, works them out. But in the end, Peter said, I'm not worthy to die as my Savior has died. And tradition says that he was crucified to a cross upside down. Now his statement said, I will never leave you. I, I, he said, I will, even if all other people deny you, I won't. Peter did say that, and in the end it was true. But why was that true? It was because Peter chose the narrow road. And in that narrow road of sanctification, he had to give up a lot, he had to deal with a lot of things in his old life that he wrestled with and struggled with. And he wasn't about to give up on those things, even though, even when he toured. He wasn't going to give up on those things until, until the very end, that he may know Christ and everything about him. And he wasn't about to give up on those things until the very end, when, things, when he was to uh, continue to go. So we know that is a man who had not only the favor of God, but God was working him through the terms of sanctification. He was a man who allowed God to let him in his life. And all the way to the end of his life, again, he never perfected who he was, but he didn't give up on who he was either. And he allowed Jesus to continue to work in his life to, in order to become the person that he needed to become. And so in sanctification, it is so critical on the narrow road because there's a wide road of Christianity where you just stay who you are, you have your fire insurance, and then there's the narrow road where the abundant life is leading you. And the problem with church in general and church people and maybe some of you is that a pastor will come in, a minister will come in and give you the word, convict you of something in your life, and you say, man, I'm not going back to hear that guy preach anymore because I don't want to hear that conviction. Well, if that man or woman of God has heard from God and has brought a conviction upon you, that is the Holy Spirit telling you there's an area in your life that he wants you to surrender to him in order for him to change you and in order to get you to be that person who he wants you to become. And you're blessed when you say, Lord, if there's any truth to what I just heard, if it was from the Lord, would you please change it within me? That I don't become that same man. That I don't become the same person that I was. And here's the, here's the thing, guys. Whenever the Holy Spirit has convicted you on anything in life, no matter what it is, God has made a way for you to overcome it. No matter what it is in your life, no matter how impossible that may look to you, God has given you a way to overcome it. You just need to trust God and say, God, I'm convicted of the thing in my life. I don't know what it is. But Lord, I'm giving it to you. And Lord, show me how I can overcome. Show me how I can make the most of this in my life that I may become all that you want me to become. And the Lord will honor that prayer. Because if he's convicted you of anything, he has given you the way to overcome it. If he has convicted anything, he's given you the way to overcome it. And so there are two paths of life into what direction you want to go. There's the wide road that leads to destruction, and there's the narrow road that leads to to life. But then in Christianity, there's also spiritually a narrow road and a wide road. There's the wide road that just leads to somewhere. And then there's that abundant life that God only knows where it leads. The abundant life is where God's favor is. The abundant life is where God's grace is poured out over and over. It's through that where a, a man or woman becomes more than they would ever believe. But like the narrow road in life, 
you have to put your foot to the grind and say, hey, I'm going to become all that God wants me to become. I don't want to become just an ordinary man. I don't want just an ordinary salvation. But I want to be able to read the Word. And I want to be able to glean. And the wonderful things about being on the narrow road is you could read the Bible a million times. And every time you read through a passage, you get a different meaning. You get a, a, a deeper understanding. And some people argue to say, well, the Bible doesn't speak about this issue. The Bible doesn't speak about that issue. Well, on the surface, you would say that that is true. And on the surface, I would agree with you. However, when you put your heart and your mind to God, and you read the Word, and you go on this road of sanctification, you'll run across passages that will speak to exactly what it is you need to hear about. And you're saying, wow. I read that Bible verse a thousand times. It never would apply this, whatever it is, to that and come up with something. But it's true. And that is how God works. That's how the Holy Spirit works within you. And you're able to glean sermon. You're glean, uh, able to glean insights into the Word of God. And people marvel at you. They won't go, how did he, how did he get this or that out of that passage? And, you know, there are false teachers out there. There are false prophets. I'm not saying they're not. But I'm saying that there are people who are real. And, and, and good teachers. And, and good Bible students. And good pastors. And, and, and those people are able to glean deep revelations out of the Word of God. And speak to you on issues you never thought were there. Because they, they, they're in with God. They're in tune. They're in this walk of sanctification. They're on the narrow road. And they're allowing the Holy Spirit full access to their body. Lord, seek the deep crevices of my heart. And whatever else is in there. And, and, and dig out whatever should be in there. And, and Lord, move mightily and bountifully in the areas of my life that I don't even know exist. And, and, and God will always take you up on that. God will always take you up. And there are men and women who are in deep relationships with God. And they're ordinary folk. They're, they're not your, you know, name it, claim it people. They're not people that are pie in the sky people. They're just ordinary people that have highlighted their Bibles, that have circled, and uh, have done a lot of things with their life, and it's, they're just anointed. I want to tell you a story. There was a man, uh, and I can't remember his name, escapes me right now, but he's the lead singer for a group called The Afters. It's a Christian contemporary group called The Afters. And he was on the radio and he was talking about the fact that his dad was a devout Christian and he died way too early. And uh, somewhere in his 40s, didn't say what the illness was, but this man was saying that he had a sister who grew up in Christianity because they had a Christian hope. And um, her sister, his sister went on to college and went to study archaeology in Israel. And for some reason, somehow, the enemy got into all that and said that, you know, there is no God, Jesus didn't, wasn't for real. And her dad, who was this devout Christian, was about to pass at the hospital. And he gave her his Bible, all written up with notes and all sorts of uh, different uh, passages that he had underlined that he circled. And he says, he said to her, "Honey, I know this Bible doesn't mean anything to you now because you don't, you know, you, don't, you have this thing against God. But I want you to have it and keep it." And she promised to do that while her dad was dying. So her dad had passed. This wonderful Christian man had passed. And she went on her, her path on the wide road for 10 years, not believing Jesus, not believing him at all for anything. And then she started having problems with her marriage. And her marriage started to fall apart. And she said she didn't understand, but she started having dreams of people in white. And she didn't understand what that meant, but she did understand this, that it had to do something with the Bible. It had to do something with Christ. And so she looked at her father's Bible, 
in more than one occasion, she opened up the Word of God and it was exactly where it needed to be to speak to her of what was going on in her life. And after three or four times of that actually happening, she called up her brother who was the lead singer for this group called the Afters. And he um, was able to lead her to Christ. He, he was able to go to her where she was and water baptize her. And uh, the man wrote, a, the group called the Afters wrote this song called Well Done, based on his life with his father. But it's to say that, I'm saying all that to say this, that here's a Christian man. He's on the narrow road to, to, sell, to uh, sanctification. He loves the Lord with everything that he's got. His Bible's all worn out from being, uh, being in it. It's anointed. And, and his prayers for his daughter, even though he passed, God still honored his prayers for his daughter, I believe. You know, and I can't prove it, but it sure makes sense to me that his prayers for his daughter were answered 10 years after he passed. The Bible that he put his words in, that he circled, he highlighted, and uh, I never have a Bible long enough to be able to do that way because I go through Bibles. Lately I've been doing better at it. But he was able to be able to be such a blessing to his daughter 10 years after the fact. And people obviously were praying for her, but there's something about a man who's on the narrow road, who's given his life to Christ, that special relationship. You see, because it all has to deal with righteousness. There are two types of righteousness. There's a righteousness where you're saved, you're going to heaven, and then there's a relationship type of righteousness where you are in a relationship with Christ, you know him as Lord and Savior, and you're walking with him in the cool of the day, and that's the relationship that her dad had. And because he had that relationship, and he had that, I believe with all my heart, it answered prayer, and she came to know Jesus. And so you could be on that road where you say, well, it doesn't matter. Here, I'm at New Lisbon. I may never be out. And that's a possibility. But I tell you one thing about doing what I have done for the years that I've done that in, in what I call uh, prison ministry, I love to be in places where there are devout men of God, and I'm sure that chaplain could speak to this as well, where there are devout men who love the Lord so much, they are in the Word so much, they, um, they speak to me, and, and they minister to me when I come. And I can't tell you how many times that has happened in my life where a, a man of God just uh, being at an institution ha has lifted me up and has, has encouraged me and has done so many wonderful things for me um, that they may never know because they're devout men of God. And you encourage a population, the people in your own community where you're at it and, and in wherever you are transferred to or wherever, whatever uh, unit you're in, you become a total blessing because there are people right now who are seeking the Lord. They are lost in needing to know who Jesus is. And you're just demonstrating just by your average everyday life that you're not only a somebody, but you're someone's. And that everything about you has changed and transformed and that you are different. The, the Bible says this, in the book of Isaiah, I want to read this for you. In the in the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 35 and 8. And there will be a highway called the way of holiness. The unclean will not travel it. Only those who walk in the way and fools will not stray into it. It's not going to be by mistake that you're on the wide road and you decide uh, of life and all of a sudden now you're on the narrow road that leads to life. No, it's a work of Jesus and unless the Lord draws you there is no salvation. And the Lord is drawing you tonight. Tonight's the night you'd want to be drawn in by the Lord. If tonight's the night the Lord is drawing working in you, by all means let that be worked within you. 
In Luke 13, 23 through 25, Jesus said, Lord, Lord, are only a few people, oh, I'm sorry, someone's asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And Jesus said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter it, but will not be able to. Many will say, that is the road I want to go on. It is the narrow road. It is where I want to be. But I tell you, they will not be able to. You look at the rich man in Lazarus. He wanted the narrow road, but it was too late. He was already gone, and he was already on that path to destruction. He wanted to have it. Then when he couldn't have it, he wanted other people to have it. <laughs> Matthew 22 and 14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, and few are are chosen. Hmm. Matthew 25 has one of the most interesting Bible parables that I've ever heard in my life. It just speaks to the narrow and the wide road. And it's a story, a parable about ten virgins. The fact that it says virgins tells me and we know that that means church people. So there are ten virgins who are claiming to be the bride of Christ. Five of them have Holy Spirit in them because it says five had oil in them. And there were five that didn't. Get! So there are five. There are five who claim. There are five who claim that they are saved and going to heaven and are not. They're still on the wide road. And they've they've tricked they've tricked the church and they've tricked people into thinking that they're Christians and they're living on the wide road. And hey this is great. I'm going to heaven and I'm living on the wide road at the same time. What a marvelous revelation of God. What a marvelous revelation. I can have my cake and eat it too. And Jesus said that the bridegroom came at an hour which no one knew. And when he came, and um, here we go with the rapture, and I'm a pre-trip rapture guy, as a lot of people are. And they said, he said, it's time to go. And so the five that had the Holy Spirit in them, which was the five that were actually saved, they were five women who were actually saved, uh, members of the actual church, that were blood washed, they know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, they were on the narrow road, they had, they had Jesus in them, they may, they may have been on the wide road, spiritually speaking, but they knew Christ, and they were going to heaven. And the door was closed, and you know the story that there were the other five frantically searched for this oil that they didn't have within them, and, and the five that had it said, go to the market square and buy some. But by the time they made a decision for Christ, the rapture had already happened, Christ's return had already come, and the door was now closed. And Jesus didn't know them. And it's not that they can't get saved after that. It's not that they can't be filled with oil after that. It's just you missed out. You missed out on the wonderful part of being a Christian. And, and I've done nursing home ministry before, and I've seen people on their deathbeds receive Christ. They're on their way to heaven. They've never been able to enter into the narrow road of sanctification. The time wasn't there. However, they do know Jesus Christ. When they pass from this life to the next, they are going to be in heaven. They are going to be in heaven. Will they have all the rewards that come with just being a, a Christian man or woman? And, and could they have been all that they could have been? No. But the thing is, they are saved. And they know Christ. 
And so today, tonight, there are two groups of people. In life, there are two groups of people, some that are on the wide road and some that are on the narrow road. Spiritually, there are people who are on the wide road that leads to destruction, and there are some that are on the narrow road that leads to life. And again, there are people that are on the narrow road that are on the wide road of spirituality and want nothing more than just to know that I'm saved. And then there are those who set up striving. And one thing I love about this Praise and Worship Choir in this place is that I feel so wonderful when I leave this place. I got to drive two hours back to where I live, and I'm like, I'm under the, the, the feeling of the Holy Spirit traveling back, and, and just the, the presence, knowing that God was with me, and God was with this praise and worship team as they did praise and worship. And I need that. I'm, I'm traveling two hours at night, and I'm kind of getting up there, kind of. And to travel two hours, for me, is the most I'll travel at night. I, I travel higher than that in the, to preach in the different churches and all that, and I'll get a hotel room. I, I just won't drive that back anymore that late at night. It's just too much. But that's neither here nor there now. It may not have anything to do with the sermon, although it may indeed bite. But, brother, you have to make a determination. Am I on the wide road that leads to destruction? Jesus also talked about this, and it relates so much to what I'm teaching on tonight. He said there were those that will come to him in those last days who pretended to be the five virgins filled with oil, but they were never filled with oil. And they, they were in the church. They showed up at the church. They were there for Sunday. They even taught Sunday school, might have done some other things for the church, may have been on the board, who knows. But Jesus said in the end, depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, I never knew you. They never had the Spirit of God living within them to change them and to transform them into what he wanted them to become. They never gave Christ the opportunity to allow the Comforter to come into his life, their lives. And from that point forward, never became what God wanted them to become. What a tragedy it is. We've only got one life. This is it. To pass from mortality to immortality. We've only got one life in order to get it right. And although choices were made in order to be on that wide road at an early age or at an age where it, you ended up here at New Lisbon, that doesn't mean, brother, by no means does it not mean that you can't get on that narrow road tonight and become all that God wants you to become. And if you are on that narrow road because you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, it doesn't mean you have to stay on the wide road of Christianity and decide for yourself, I got my, I got my uh, fire insurance from going to heaven, but tonight you want to make a decision, say, tonight, brothers, in front of this whole church, this congregation of people, that I want to become more than that. And I'm going to talk to chaplain, I'm going to see what I could do, that I could become more than just an ordinary Christian. I want to pray for you, and before I pray for you, I just, I know there are two groups of people. There are two groups of people. There are those that know Jesus Christ and those that don't. I want to pray for both of you. Heavenly Father, right now, in the master's name of Jesus, I pray for those who do not know Jesus. They are five people, five virgins who don't have oil in their lamps. They are living on the wide road with all the glimmer, with all the lights, with all the ecstasy, and yet they have no life. They're on a road that leads to destruction. But today, brother, you want to raise a hand and you want to say, today I want to know Jesus. I want to know him as my Lord and Savior. And if, if I backtracked and I've no longer followed God what I once did, I'm making a recommitment. 
And there are those of you who know Jesus Christ, but tonight you want to make a deeper walk with him. Let me pray for you as well. Heavenly Father, right now I pray for my brothers who don't know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior tonight. In this prayer, Lord, just tell, tell it like it is. Lord, I, I've walked without you. But tonight I heard the Spirit of God speak to me, and tonight I'm making a decision for Christ. Tonight my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My sins are washed away. They've been cast as far as east as west, never to return no more. And then again, I have heard. I heard the call today that I am saved. I know Jesus Christ, but Lord, I want the abundant life. I want all that you have for me tonight, Lord God. Lord, have full control over this body that I may become exactly the man that you want me to become. Lord, that you may fill me with everything that I may become all that you want me to become. And I do this all for the praise of your glory, Lord God. Remind me each day. Now, if that's your prayer, brothers, go to chaplain and, and tell him that you made a decision for Christ. May, tell him that you made a decision that you want to walk deeper and help him to walk you through what needs to go next. This is Pastor Mike, Michael Herbert. I'm glad to be part of you. I'm glad the uh, system is opening up on July 5th. God only knows what that means as far as in person, but I look forward to that day where I can physically with you. But until that time, God bless you and thank you for being part of the service. Amen.